Jerry of the Circus. For Jerry of the Circus. Hey, was Zayde, and she was sweet, and I was passing down the street when I lived. I, uh, yeah, uh, what? Uh, Colonel, it's me, Jerry. Ah, Jerry. Oh, yes, yes, of course, my boy. Come, come right in, yes. My, it, it's your dark in here. Yes, yes, such nonsense, such foolishness. You think I was a babe in arms, wouldn't you? Shut the door, Jerry. That's it. I'm supposed to stay in the dark. Such goings on. I had no idea how dark these wagons could be. At my age, to come down to the measles and then to be forced to stay in the dark. Yeah, I know. I sure hated it when I had the measles. But I guess the doctors know what they're doing. Know what they're doing? Da ba. Jerry, I've got the finest eyesight in the world. I never miss a thing. And to have a nincompoop doctor send me to bed and then to keep me there. He was trying to get Mr. Randall to send you to the hospital. What? And let the show go on without me, it can't be done. I told Mr. Randall that Tom and I could take care of you. You see, we've both had the measles, so it's safe for us. Oh, you did, Jerry. Well, now I call that real friendly. Yes, I sure see, do. See, we're only too glad to. Tom and I are buddies, and we'd be proud to take care of you. Yes, yes. I hope Mr. Randall put that doctor in his place for suggesting the hospital. Well, you see... Now, well, now, now, come, come, my boy, out with it. Well, he said he'd see how you got along and how well Tom and I manage. Mr. Randall said he'd be by here later. Hey, he'd better. If he thinks he can put Colonel Charles Wyndham Alger in a hospital, he's got another thought coming. It's lucky Mr. Randall's had the measles, too, or he wouldn't be able to come and see us. They say it's lots worse for grown-ups than for children. What is, Jerry? The measles. No, I don't believe him, son. It's just that growing up's fuss more than children. Yes, yes, sir. That's what it is. Kids don't complain so much. <laughs> You're sure a good sport, Colonel. Ah, might as well be, son. I always say when you're flat on your back, you might just as well be cheerful. Yeah, nothing else you can be. Say, Colonel, Bump says you know more about the old circus days than anybody else in the business. Well, now, my son, shouldn't be surprised if I do, yes, sir. My circus days carry me back to the time when circuses weren't so popular as they are nowadays. No, <laughs> not by a long shot, Jerry, not by a long shot. How do you mean, Colonel? Didn't folks always like circuses? Well, now, Jerry, I guess the young folks always did, but the grown-ups, that's another story. Yes, another story. I had to run away after the first time I saw a circus. The folks thought that I'd just gone to the dogs for sure. No. Oh, I don't believe it. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes. You see, uh, way before my time, circuses weren't run by men like Mr. Randall. No, sir. In the old days, all the scallywags in the world were supposed to be connected with the traveling shows. Were they? Well, now, son, some were and some weren't. The first circus I joined up with was run by an old ruffian. We called him Old Tom. Yes, he didn't care much how we cheated the public. No, sir. The more we cheated, the better was his motto. But if he cheated the townsfolks, I shouldn't think he'd have trouble the next year. Son, you hit the nail right on the head. 
I tell you, old Tom never dared visit the same town two years in succession. Well, what did he do then? Well, he kept stopping at different towns across the country. Then about the third year, he figured they'd forgotten about the last time and he'd bring in another show. Did it work? Sometimes it did and sometimes it didn't. I remember one town, though, in the south that didn't forget. Yep, they were sure laying for old Tom and his show. When the circus tent went up, all the rubes in town came down. Pretty soon, the roustabout saw there was a fight brewing for sure, and up went the cry, Hey, Rube. Yes, you could hear it all over the lot. What did the Hey, Rube mean? That was an old circus cry, meaning a fight with the rubes or city folks was on. But how could he ever give a show? Well, they didn't always fight. Yes, it was quite an experience for me as a boy, son, quite an experience. Then I heard about the Sterling Brothers outfit. You know, Jerry, those Sterling Brothers did more for circuses in this country than any other people in the business. Why? They insisted on running a fair show. They never cheated the public. They advertised the fact that it was safe for women and children to come to the shows. Yes, and if old John Sterling or any of his brothers ever caught his ticket sellers shortchanging the public, they were fired on the spot. You mean to say they didn't used to give the right change? Not if they could help it. No wonder circuses used to have a bad name. Yes, yes. Respectable folks tried to keep their children away from the excitement and dangers of the old circus tents. Did you ever work for Mr. Sterling? Did I? Did I? Well, I should say I did. For most 20 years. You did? Yes, sirree. It happened like this. Old Tom had been keeping our salaries back for a long time. It was toward the end of the season when our show passed close to the Sterling Brothers' show. And I uh, had already heard how they ran things, so I ditched old Tom for good and for all. I decided to throw in my lot with these brothers, providing they would take me, of course. You left without your salary? Yes, I sure did. <laughs> I figured the old geezer wouldn't pay me anyhow. What? Sure thing. I tell you, son, he not only rooked the public, but he took every opportunity he could for holding back on his own people. For at the end of the season, it wasn't nothing for him to fire half the outfit, then refuse to pay him. Say, I'm sure glad I work for Mr. Randall. He pays every week. All the circuses do nowadays, Jerry. Oh, that must be Tom. Ah, oh, yes, Tom, no, Tom, yeah. Let him in, Jerry, let him in. Hiya, Tom. I thought it was you. Hello. I thought it was about time the Colonel had something to eat. You did now. Well, Tom, my boy, I was beginning to think the same thing. Uh, where shall I put the tray, Colonel Alger? Ah, the tray. Well, now, son, seems like my lap would be the most convenient place. Here, I'll put a pillow back of you. There it is. Is that better? Yeah. Uh, couldn't be better. Couldn't be better. Uh, thank you, Jared. Thank you. Mmm, that certainly smells tempting there, Tom. I hope it's okay, Colonel. Uh, got a good appetite? Never been better, my boy. Guess nothing but locked jaw could keep me from enjoying a meal. Now, if you boys excuse me, I guess I'll pitch right in. Sure, go ahead. Say, Tom, you sure missed it. What? Well, the Colonel's been telling me all about the old days in the circus. They sure used to run things different than they do now. Yes, sirree, they sure did. Yes, they did. I tell you, boys... The greatest man in the world for crazy stunts was P.T. Barnum. Yes, he was the greatest bunko artist in the world. What's bunko artist? A man who's a genius at selling folks a joke. Barnum could play more jokes on the public than any man who's ever lived. And what's more, Tom, he could make them love it. Really? Yes, sir. I'll tell you, boys, it took a smart man to beat Barnum. Did anyone ever put anything over on him? Now and then, but not often. Tell us one time. Yeah, I tell you. You sure that I'm not boring you, boys? I should say not. Oh, gosh, no. Well, the best story I know was about the man who sold Barnum a cherry-colored cat. cherry color? I never heard of a cherry-colored cat. Neither had Mr. Barnum. So he bought it to the tune of about $150. Ooh, that's an awful lot of money for a cat. Yes, sir, I guess that's what Mr. Barnum thought, especially after he saw the cat. Why, wasn't it cherry-colored? <laughs> it sure was, rusty black. But, but I thought you just said the cat was red. Oh, no, I just said the cat was cherry-colored, and so did the man who sold Barnum the cat. After all, there are black cherries. <laughs>
<laughs> I bet Mr. Barnum was sure mad. Yeah, I reckon he was a bit surprised. But I tell you, it was hard to get the best of that man. Yes, it certainly was. Do you know what Barnum did then? No, what? He added it to the sideshow as the only cherry-colored cat in captivity. You mean folks paid to see that black cat? You bet they did, and laughed themselves sick when they found they'd fallen for a gag. That's what Dad used to say, that Barnum put a lot over on the public, but they loved it and were always willing to pay for it, and then laugh at the joke on themselves. Yes, yes. Do you uh, boys know where the phrase white elephant comes from? Well, it means having something you don't want, doesn't it? It sure does, and it comes from the time Barnum got a real white elephant and then didn't know what to do with it after he got it. Oh, gee, someone's coming. What's the story, Colonel? Colonel, Colonel Usher. Yes, all right. Let him in, Jerry. It's Mr. Randall. Ah, hello there. How's the patient? Ah, not so patient, Mr. Randall. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that, Colonel. Say, Mr. Randall, the Colonel was going to tell us about Barnum's white elephant. Well, I guess that'll have to wait. And you boys know it's uh, almost time for the show to go on? What? Say, we haven't been here that long. Good night, and I told Leo at the mess tent I'd only be a jiffy. Now, I tell you, Randall, these boys got me spinning yarns, and I guess none of us realize the time. Yeah, all right, it's so dark in here and all. <laughs> yeah, I, I know how the colonel is once he gets started. Nothing will stop him. Gee whiz, <laughs> I'm sorry. I. That's yeah, all right, boys, run along. Oh, and Jerry. Yes, Mr. Randall? Uh, there's an airmail registered letter in my office wagon for you. There is? Yeah. Gee, I wonder who it can be from. I don't know, Jerry. I didn't notice the postmark. Say, I wonder if it's about that safety deposit box of Dad's. Gee, seems like I'll never find out what's in it. Or it might be from Spike about getting out of jail. Say, we better go. Thanks, Mr. Randall. I'll get the letter right away. Right. Yeah, thanks, boys, for being such good company. Well, that was nothing. Thank you for the stories. And see, Colonel, remember about that white elephant story. We'll be back later. Okay, boys, so long. So long, yes, yes. Two mighty nice boys. Yeah, they certainly are. Now, Colonel, we've got uh, things to talk over. First of all, I've sent word on about the Rusoff troop. Hey, you're going to let those Cossacks ride at the Fordham races? Yes, that's a good idea of yours, and I, I think we'll give it a try. Well, now, Randall, I'm glad to hear you say that. It's mighty fine working for a man with your imagination and good judgment. Yes, indeed it is. Yeah, well, I hope you'll continue to feel that way, Colonel, because my best judgment says right now that the right place for you right now is at the hospital. What? Yeah, I think it'd be better for you. You'd uh, get better care there. Let the circus. Go on without me. No, sir. You can't do that, Mr. Randall. Why, in a few days, I'll be as fit as a fiddle. Yes, and raring to go. I know that, Colonel, but measles are contagious, and the best thing to do not is... Not on your life, Randall. Not on your life. I won't stir out of this wagon. I guess I can be quarantined just as snugly here as in the big uh, hospital. Yes, yes, I know, Colonel, but I... I here I am, and here I stay. You can put me right on the flat cars, and I'll be just as comfy as... Well, after all, if you had the measles, you wouldn't leave the show. <laughs> okay, Colonel, you win. I didn't have much hope of getting rid of you anyway, but I promised the doctor I'd try. Yeah, but you didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs>